people out hunting this morning? Yep. We're over in a little bit different area this morning. Me and Ben decided to come over here where we saw that buck with the horns that were like straight out from his head. We're gonna try around here today. Hayden and Roy went to the north. There's a bunch of little walking pieces and little parcels of public ground here. And we drove around it a couple days ago and saw quite a few antelope. We just got over here to the area that we're wanting to hunt and already seeing a guy walking in and a couple of trucks driving around. So there's definitely some people over here. Hopefully they haven't messed with all the antelope yet. We could just see one in that kind of terrain. That'd be awesome. Yes, it's good stuff. We saw one from here last time, remember? Mm -hmm. Way down in there. Oh, that sun's out. Sun's okay. out, butt's out. Crown more butts. Does. Oh, big buck, big buck, big yeah, buck. Big buck. Yeah. Holy cow, that's a, that's a, that's a huge. <laughs> that's pretty cool. He's got like four or five does sitting there. In the ground. He's just got big forks, doesn't he? <laughs> I thought it was a white tail at first. Right in the little gully. That's pretty cool. Right here, right here. That's a small buck. Keep that way, boy. Just ran into a bunch of pronghorn. One buck, like 50 yards away or something. There's another pronghorn out in this green field. Well, there's two more. One out here and one up top. Oh, and they're all three. Oh, there, there's going to public. That's a, that's a small buck, I think. Buck. I think there's another one around here. Yep. That's another buck. There's three bucks. That one's a huge buck. Is it? Look at him. You see him on the screen? Yeah, that is a nice buck. We got three bucks out here. They're all on private, but this one's about to cross people. They're real close to being on public. He's got to go, well, the one's got to go 10 more yards and jump a fence, and he's on the public. Yeah, that's a good one. Going towards the public. Mm -hmm. This area's holding quite a bit of them. Just the back of the public offer anything like train wise or like ponds? There's a little bit of train. There's like two or three ponds back in there and a little bit of train but nothing crazy. Couple, are those the three does that we were looking at? Um, no. Those are two bucks and a doe and two more to the right of them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think those are on public but they're close. Me and Ben just came over this first little rise here and we spotted a ton of pronghorn down here on the public. There's probably 20 or 30 total pronghorn down there, and they're all split up into different groups. This fence runs down, and then it drops off into a little drainage, which we think we can get there because the pronghorn are probably a mile away or so. I think we can just sneak our way down this fence, get in that drainage, and then work our way up and you know keep tabs on the pronghorn. I think it's that's what we did different yesterday than what we're going to do today is just try and get as close as we can to them and then just wait and see what they do throughout the day as they move, you know, try and almost let them make the mistake and get closer to us instead of us constantly trying to get closer to them. So. We got food in our packs and plenty of water, so we got enough stuff to stay in here all day. We'll see, it might be a long day of waiting them out, but it'll be fun. Been sitting here under the shade tree watching pronghorn go from this little pond up to what looks to be like a watering tank for cattle and pronghorn and they're just going back and forth from green fields up on private down to the watering hole and then we've seen two does come down here to this pond and then go up to the watering hole this ditch is getting pretty shallow but we should be able to follow it up towards where that watering hole is we're just going to try and get as close as we can to that in that line that they seem to be trialing on. We've got plenty of time and that we've seen a couple different bucks on that same line as well. 
a lot of does doing it more than the bucks, but every once in a while there's a buck on that line going into the water. So it might take us a while to get up there just because it's so shallow and there's so many prong going around. But if we can get up there, we're going to be in real good shape. After these pronghorn had passed, we made our way up the drainage and found a little pond and we could tell that they had been using it quite a bit. We ended up spending a good chunk of the afternoon watching pronghorn in the distance and around 2 o'clock we had two bucks come in on a beeline for the pond. Come on over buddy. The big one's coming now. After getting busted by these two bucks, we weren't sure how we were going to get hit for a shot if more pronghorn were to come in. We take some time to look over the situation and go out to where the pronghorn had made it to, to look back and see what they could see as they were coming into the pond. Eventually we came up with the idea of making a mud blind. We took dried up chunks of mud from around the pond and stacked them up until they were high enough to hide the two of us. We just got set up back on this pond and what we ended up doing was taking a bunch of this mud it's down by the pond and it's all caked together from being so dry. Ben was just ripping one piece out after another and I was carrying them up there. Then we set all of them up around us. Basically made a little blind here. We can see at least one buck that's walking right at us to this pond right now. I think they're definitely coming to this pond. It's just a matter of if we're hit well enough. Two hours till dark and pronghorn all around us so hopefully we'll have a few come in and Maybe get a shot at one. He's coming.
footage and I shot way over him. I had my pin adjusted to 50 because I we weren't expecting him to come around to this side even necessarily. Figured my shots were probably going to be at least 50. He ended up coming to at least 40, maybe even a little bit closer. And uh, I put my 50 pin, I remember, I put it right at the bottom of his belly. Like, I think he was just like a little bit closer than what I thought. There's a little rock out there that I ranged, and it was 40, and he was at that or closer. I think we're gonna get a lot more chances here. Yeah. This is our first pretty much evening here in this little pond here. Yeah. On to the next one. Still in good shape, no blood on it. I think these are his tracks. about 38 yards. <laughs> There's our setup. <laughs> it's a good setup. Alright, I'm going to take a practice shot because obviously it doesn't feel good to launch one way over Bronghorn's back like that, so. Closer because that looks way further than what he was. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like it looks I that mean, way. We just got back in here to this little all made blind. There's one pronghorn out that way, which is the direction they came from last night. There's a chance that pronghorns start working this way to get back out to where they were. That seems like where quite a few of them want to spend their day is out there. And yesterday morning when Ben and I were in here, there was pronghorn going back and forth, especially along this fence back here and through right along this pond. I might shift this blind down a little bit further towards that corner just to make it a little bit a easier shot and then sit here and see if anything comes by. After getting the blind shifted, Ben and I got settled in and within minutes we had bucks moving our way.
after these bucks cleared out, we settled back in the blind and I re-knocked an arrow and within 15 minutes we had a doe coming straight for the pond. Ted got it. <laughs> the farthest shot I've taken. <laughs> like, every other shot has been closer than that. It's just been like a matter of a little bit. I, I put that camera way up there and I was like, he'd be like, I'm gonna go for it. I'm like, are you kidding me? She's farther away than ever before. <laughs> I don't know how many opportunities we're gonna have. I told you that when she was coming in, I'm like, I mean, yeah, we've had how many opportunities bucks come in my goal is to shoot a big that big one that was coming in mm -hmm. but then after yesterday missing that one it's like I don't know how many times it's just gonna keep coming back so it's and I want to get a freaking problem yeah <laughs> we got one dude <laughs> we did it that's freaking sweet first pronghorn right there it's only day three obviously you know I don't want it to look like we're just out here flinging arrows. I'm not happy about the misses, obviously, and I wanted to get a buck. And I wanted to hold out for a buck. But then when everything starts coming together and it's like, all right, this is like the spot where we're going to have to kill one here, probably. You know, we could obviously go try, try and find another spot like this, but if we just keep coming in here and then eventually stuff's not going to keep coming back. So she gave me a good opportunity, so. They are crazy. Their eyeballs are. They are such cool animals. No, oh, they're really cool, I think. Their eyeballs are the coolest thing to me. It's like they can see, I think, 360 degrees around them, all the way around them, dang there. That's crazy. I don't know how that is, but if you look it up on Google, it says they can see 
360 degrees. Now we just gotta get uh, Hayden and Roy back in this spot. Could you I, see her go down or not at all? I knew, I could tell she was going down and she, right when it hit her, I'm like, okay, well that was about perfect. Yeah, you can see the fleshings, can't you? Yeah, you know? I mean, it had to be like 50 yards. That is so cool. Got a dud in the blind. This is the blind that we made <laughs> out of pond mud. It's perfect. I mean, if you if you stand where the pronghorn were, I mean, it literally looks like part of the pond, and it looks it blends in really really well. Got her tagged up. Instead of quartering up, we're not we don't we don't have that far of a walk, so we're gonna try and drag her out. And got all the game bags and knives and stuff at the car, so let's do it. Yeah, baby. I did it, I think, for two deer last year. Two white tails. Those are a little bigger than this. I mean, they can look deceiving. I think I got it though. All right, you're welcome to try it. <laughs> How's it feel? Not too bad. I think I got it. You do? Yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. We are all back at camp now. We all adjusted camp about an hour from where me and Ben were hunting today. And Roy and Hayden have been hunting up here the past couple of days and they've been into quite a bit of action, it sounds like. Tomorrow and next couple of days, we're gonna be hunting up here. Hopefully, Hayden's gonna kill a buck. We'll get out and explore some new terrain next couple of days, should be a lot of fun. But we're gonna cook up some of the backstrap from the doe that we shot today. And antelope meat is some of the best stuff that I've ever had. It's my know, favorite. Yeah, meat. we ate some of Zach's, Zach's last, year. last year and it was really good. It's Same. some of the best meat out there. So we're excited. We're going to cook this back strap up and go to bed and get up in the morning and chase the pronghorn again. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one.